let's figure out the force of charge one on charge two here. Let's go about working that out. Right. So the first thing I would do is actually draw a vector that indicates the force into our picture. So let's draw that vector. of one on two. There's also a force of two on one, but we don't care about that. I, I should be more careful to get it along the right lines. Okay, there we go. Good. Okay, well now we have to start figuring out that force. And for this problem to um, avoid confusion, maybe we shouldn't even bother writing in this force because the question's not asking about it. Although you're right, that's what that force would look like. Right. All right, now I think you saw the method for that on the other video, but we can go through this together. The key here is that now we're working in two dimensions. Right. And the key for two dimensions is to draw two separate triangles off to the side, a force triangle and a distance triangle. put an R here to show this is the distance triangle, and an F to show this is the force triangle. Here's charge two, here's charge one. This represents the origin. And we already know how long this leg should be, which is... Oh no, that's five. Right. And this leg should be... Four. I mean, three. Right. And that's pretty much all we know. Now, what's the question asking us for? Um, what's well, asking us for this force, right. which is this. Mm -hmm. However, because the force is a vector, we also have to figure out what its direction is. Mm -hmm. Now, how do we describe the direction of a two-dimensional vector? How are we going to say what the direction of the force is? People oftentimes have difficulty specifying that. Well, you can specify the direction of a two-dimensional vector by giving the angle that it makes. So if we can say what this angle is, then we'll have the direction as well. So those would be the answers to the question. It's not enough to figure out this length, because that's just the magnitude. We're going to have to figure out this angle, too, to find the direction. OK, um, well, uh, so we need to start going about that. So how can we find this length here? Um, well, we can here. Right. Let's go ahead and calculate that. Do you have a calculator with you? Using the Pythagorean theorem, good. And then we can find that common angle. Excellent. Right. That's true. Sure you're in degrees mode, but it looks like you are. I'm going to have to be 59.5 degrees. And you're using the fact that these are similar triangles. So if we know this angle, we know this angle here. But this one was easier because we already knew these signs. So um, the way you find this is you just take the inverse sign of both sides. Good. So the inverse sign of this would be this. All right, so you actually found the direction first, which is fine. Very good. Okay, 
we still need to figure out how long this is. Right, so we need to know the x and y components. That would be one way to do it. However, it's actually easier to figure this out directly, since we don't know the x and y components anyway. How can we figure this out directly? Well, that's what Coulomb's law is for. Coulomb's law is for figuring out the magnitude of the force, right? Remember that Coulomb's law tells us the magnitude of the force. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the answer. If we plug into that formula, that will tell us what the magnitude of the force oh, is. So we didn't need to find the angle at all. Well, we did, because the question was asking us for the force, and you haven't said what the force is unless you've said what its magnitude and its direction is. So you've answered half of the question, which is you've answered its direction. Um, if they'd only asked you for the magnitude, then no, you wouldn't need this. But if they ask you for the force, that means magnitude and direction. So do you mean de direction as a value or a direction in terms of whether it'll be positive or negative? You just mean like the angle is the direction. Well, direction just means direction. Okay. Direction just means some indication of what direction the vector is pointing in. Yeah. And there are different ways of describing directions. Sometimes we just describe directions in words. Yeah. For, we, for example, we know this direction is northwest. But that's not good enough because there's many different northwest arrows. So we have to be more quantitative about how it's northwest. Mm -hmm. Well, the way to be quantitative is to describe the direction by specifying its, uh, its angle. Um, you can't use a sign to indicate the direction here. You can only use signs if, um, for vectors that are parallel to an axis. You can't use a sign for a direction for an overall vector because that's not parallel or anti-parallel to either axis. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, maybe come back to that in a second, and it'll, it'll make more sense. But anyway, now we found the direction, and now we have to find the magnitude. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So what's our answer? What is the force? Represented by this uh, an angle of 59.5 degrees. Okay. That's right. That's right. So if they asked you for the magnitude and the direction of the force, this is the magnitude, and here the direction is specified by this angle. It was good that you didn't plug in the negatives for these charges. We just plug in the magnitudes of the charges. Mm -hmm. One thing that we've seen here again is we don't need r hat. R hat is not necessary to figure out the direction. Um, it's simpler just to use these two similar triangles to work out what the directions are. Um, we can just use the form of Coulomb's law that focuses on magnitudes. We only need a formula for magnitudes because the directions are obvious. Mm -hmm. Although I should have been more careful here. I should have put an arrow here to show the direction of this force. We should put arrows here to show the direction of this force. All right, well now let's review something else. Something else you might have to do is break a, um, the electric force into components. Um, so now let's take this force and break it into components and figure out what those components are. Well, the first thing to do then is to put arrows on these legs. So what should the arrows on the legs look like? Should this leg be up or down? Um, should it go? Because the overall vector is up. And how about this one? It should be to the left. Right. 
the overall vector is up and to the left. So that tells us what the legs are. And we can label this as f sub x. No, nope, f sub y. And this is f sub x. What was the purpose of putting in these arrows to tell us the signs? What should be the sign of f sub y? Because that's up. We're choosing those as our positive directions. And what should be the sign of f sub x? We want to do that first, before we find the magnitudes, because if we wait, we're likely to forget to put in the signs. Mm -hmm. 